face clinic of this morning it's a faith clinic for the retreat i want to remind you once again it's not a crusade where we only talk about salvation and healing but we come to the retreat so that everything the lord has for us in getting us ready for the coming of the lord that's why we came to the retreat just to remind you of the restoration to remind you of the experiences of the christian the salvation the sanctification the holy ghost baptism and everything we need in our lives for readiness for the coming of the lord and then it's a period for teaching it's not a time of emotion a time of clapping a time of jumping a time of screaming teaching the word of god that's what retreat is meant for a time of reminding ourselves the things we have learned all over the years so that we do not let them sleep away from us a time of empowerment where you have power over sin power over sickness power over satan and power in all the circumstances and situations of life it's a time of advancing moving on moving up going higher and it's a time of transformation i want you to keep all that in your mind as we come to every session during this time of the retreat and the lord will bless you abundantly let's close our eyes for prayer father in the name of jesus we thank you for this retreat a time of coming apart so that you can strengthen everyone in the inner man i'm asking this morning that your power your strength will come to every one of your children in jesus name for those who are still to know you or to receive the gift of grace and eternal life lord in your love by your power draw them into the kingdom in jesus name for those who are children of the king and their citizens of the kingdom we pray everything we need for the spirit for the soul for the body for the individual for the family for the whole church grant unto us in jesus name nobody will lack any blessing of the lord we well, thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray in luke chapter 11 reading here from verse 1 luke 11 verse 1 and it came to pass that as he was praying as jesus was praying as our Lord was praying in a certain place, when he ceased after that prayer, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. We come this morning to talk about the prayer that prevails and the faith that never fails the prayer that prevails and the faith that never fails it's uh, noteworthy that john taught his disciples to pray but the disciples of jesus said we are not disciples of john we want our master, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer to teach us how to pray just like John taught his own disciples to pray. There are ways disciples of Moses will pray. 
were not Moses' disciples. There are ways the disciples of false prophets will pray, were not the disciples of the false prophets. There are ways the disciples of John will pray, but we are not disciples of John. We follow the Lord. He is our master. He is our Lord. He is our savior. And so we want him to teach us how to pray. Just like others have taught their people how to pray. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, A Father which art in heaven. The ground of prayer. The basis of prayer. The foundation of the prayer that prevails is that you are a child of God. You can say, Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The prayer that prevails will honor the name of the Lord, glorify the name of the Lord, exalt the name of the Lord thy kingdom come the prayer that prevails the prayer that Christ taught his disciples is the kind of prayer that will exalt the king of the kingdom that will bring near the kingdom of righteousness the prayer that prevails will be the one that expands the kingdom of God and then thy will be done as in heaven so in earth the prayer that prevails will not be a prayer that contradicts the will of God a prayer that contradicts the word of God the prayer that prevails will be the prayer that aligns itself with the will of God and the readiness and the willingness to do that will here on earth as the will is done in heaven give us this day our daily bread the prayer that prevails includes the prayer for the needs of our body so that our body will be in good condition healthy our body will be in good condition satisfied our body will be in good condition, protected, so as to be the best, the best temple of the Holy Ghost, and the best habitation of our soul and spirit. Forgive us our sins. The prayer that prevails will be a prayer that is prayed out of a clear conscience. Sins are forgiven. There is no sin acting as a hindrance. That's why it says, if you're going to pray the prayer that prevails, it will be a prayer that is based on the fact that you're free from condemnation. You're free from guilt. Your sins are forgiven. Then it says, for we also forgive everyone that is trespassed, that has trespassed against us, indebted unto us. It means it's a prayer that is coming out of a heart that has no bitterness. Because the root of bitterness will defile you, will destroy you, and will hinder your prayer and lead us not into temptation. The person on praying ground, the person that has a kind of assurance that God will answer my prayer is not somebody that is putting himself into temptation. And then when he gets into trouble, oh God, I'm here. I came here, I was seeking for something of the flesh, and now I'm in trouble. Deliver me. The kind of prayer that prevails will be a prayer that is avoiding temptation at all costs. At all costs. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us from the evil one. And when you are praying ground, and you see all this that Christ has taught, and you by grace live according to them, total deliverance will be yours in Jesus' name. And as Jesus spoke about this kind of prayer, 
he also gave illustration in verse 5. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at the middle of the night, midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine. In his journey, is come to me, and I have nothing to search before him. And each he from within shall say, shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. Look at verse 8. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity. Perseverance in prayer. The prayer that prevails is the prayer that will not let go. I will not let you go except you bless me. Persevering, importunate, steady, and driven by that need and saying, I must be blessed. Because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. This morning, I want to assure you, as we come and we pray the way Christ has taught, and we pray with the importunity, with the perseverance that Christ has illustrated, your prayer will be answered. And I say unto you, ask and shall be given you. Ask for the important things first. Essential things first. If you are not saved, Christ can come at any time. If you are not born again, you'll miss heaven. If Christ came and you were still in that unregenerate condition, the most important thing you want to ask, the very first thing you want to ask, the salvation of the Lord. First things first. Ask, and it shall be given you. If you know that your heart is not holy, your tongue is not holy, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Your thoughts are not holy. The thoughts dictate the action. The action dictates the habit. The habit paints the lie. If you know your thoughts are not holy, without holiness no man shall see the Lord. The Lord can come at any time. Ask for holiness and it shall be given you if you know that you don't have power for service, power to evangelize. So you don't go empty-handed in the sight of the Lord, ask for the power. Baptism, immersion in the Holy Ghost. Ask, and it shall be given you. If you're sick, you need healing. Ask, and it shall be given you. If you're tormented and tortured and afflicted and oppressed, you need deliverance. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find not and it shall be opened unto you for everyone that asketh receiveth you will not be missing i said you will not miss out everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father will he give him a stone the answer is no or if he ask a fish will he for a fish give him a serpent a snake the answer is no or if he ask an egg 
Will he offer him a scorpion? The answer is no. Here is the conclusion. For the people that want to pray, the prayer that prevails, and you want to manifest the faith that never fails, here is the conclusion in verse 13. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit? See what Jesus is saying? He said, he's talking about good things. And instead of saying, how much more will God give you healing? How much more will God give you deliverance? How much more will God give you food to satisfy your hunger? It says, how much more will he give you the Holy Spirit? Because when you have the Holy Spirit, you'll have every other thing. He will inspire you. He will direct you. He will lead you. He will guide you to the place you are going to have all the other things. That's why you ask for the important, the essential, the indispensable. You ask first things first. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? He will answer your prayer. James chapter 1 James chapter 1 the prayer that prevails and the faith that never fails James chapter 1 verse 5 if any of you this speaks to everyone God is no respect of persons he wants to bless you that's why you are here. He is not a partial God. He is no respecter of persons. Any of you, if any of you lack wisdom, lack salvation, lack sanctification, lack the power of the Holy Ghost, lack zeal in evangelism, if any of you lack the resources of heaven, if any of you lack the fulfillment of any of the great promises of God in your life, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally. He is not stingy with his gifts. He gives liberally. When he gives salvation, he gives the salvation that sets you free from sin. When he gives sanctification, he gives entire sanctification. Real sanctification. He giveth liberally. When he gives the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he gives a powerful, mighty experience that makes you a dynamite. And when he gives healing, he gives complete healing, not partial healing. When he gives you deliverance, he gives you a kind of deliverance that you are totally free. This morning, he will answer your prayer. That give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. The doubting man, the wavering man will not receive. But when you come and your faith is in the one who is faithful, who has promised, it says, you'll give liberally. Double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. The prayer that prevails and the faith that never fails. Three points to consider before prayer. Number one, the persevering prayer of faith. 
the persevering prayer of faith. Prayer of faith, yes. But that perseveres, that says, this is the promise of God. It shall be mine. I will not give in, cave in, give up of faith. The persevering prayer of faith. Number two, the powerful promise that never fails. The powerful promise, the promise of God that never, never fails. Number three, the precious possession of the faithful. Do so faithfully come to God and they say, this is what God has promised. And this is what I expect from the faithful God. And when a faithful child of God comes to the faithful God and they are connected with the faith that holds son, I will not give up the precious possession that he had provided through Calvary becomes ours. You came here this morning to receive, you will receive in Jesus' name. Number one, the persevering prayer of faith. James chapter 5, reading from verse 16. James 5, verse 16. Confess your faults one to another. That's telling us that as we approach God, a clear conscience is very necessary. As we approach God in prayer, we cannot come with a burdened conscience, a guilty conscience, a condemned conscience, a kind of conscience that is overburdened by unresolved offense. That's why it says, confess your faults one to another. That doesn't mean that you go about telling everybody around, I'm faulty, I'm sinful, I'm bad, I'm evil. No, it just means that you go to the person you have offended, the person you have stolen from, the person you have defrauded, the person you have cheated, the person you have jilted. And then you say, I am sorry to the person you offended. And if there's anything to restore, you restore that. Then you have a conscious voyage of offense toward God and toward man. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that she may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. You know the righteous man here is not the one just saying, I'm righteous, I'm righteous. It's the one that has confessed and forsaken his sin, the righteous man. It's the one that has confessed to the wronged party, made restitution, and says, I'm, I praise God, that body is lifted from me. The guilt I've been carrying about, every time I see that person, every time I think about that person, that guilt is gone because I confess that. I made restitution for that. All that is settled and it says now that righteous man, no guilt, no condemnation, he can come and the effectual fervent prayer of that man, righteous man, availeth much. So that is what the Lord is telling us. In Second Chronicles chapter 7, Second Chronicles Chapter 7, the persevering prayer of faith. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If you're going to pray with expectation, pray with faith and persevere and know that there is nothing between you and God that you stand as a barrier. Here's what it says. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, 
if there's pride in any way, and it's pride that makes people neglect what God is saying. I can't say I'm sorry to that person. I know I've done wrong, but I would lose face. He looks at me up there. If I go to say, I stole this, have your money back. I defrauded you, have your money back. I took your property, have it back. If I go to do that, you will not respect me again. That's pride. But if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. That's how to pray. You'll pray, but what makes the prayer to be answered? You'll turn from your wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Can I have an amen there? Many people are saying, let God heal us. Let God heal our family. Let God heal our community. Let God heal our land. Yes, he will. Yes, he can. Let my people who are called by my name humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, and then pray. In Psalm 66, Psalm 66, reading from verse 16, it says, Come and hear, all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul, not just my body, my soul, my spirit, my body. They are all important. There are many people that neglect and overlook the need of their soul. But he says, come and hear, ye that fear the Lord. I will tell you what he has done for my soul. I cried unto him with my mouth. And he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I cherish iniquity in my heart, if I hold on to iniquity in my heart, if I embrace iniquity in my heart, if I defend and protect iniquity in my life, if I excuse iniquity in my behavior, in my character, and I'm always saying, I did this because of that. I did this because of him. I did this because of her. I'm, I'm excusing iniquity in my life. I regard it. I respect it. I protect it. I preserve it in my life. I will not let it go. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily, truly, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which has not turned away my prayer from his mercy, nor his mercy from me. He rejoices in the fact that he exposed the iniquity. He rejected the iniquity. He confessed the iniquity. He forsook the iniquity. And because of that, he could come and pray the prayer that prevails. And God answered. It's your turn this morning to pray and to have answered to your prayer. And if there's any iniquity you've been cherishing, covering up, embracing, loving, any iniquity you've been hiding, 
any iniquity you've been protecting in your life. I see that iniquity is a delicate baby that you must nurse. This morning, you confess, you forsake, you throw away. And then, as you forsake that iniquity, the mercy of God will come upon your life. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 9. Proverbs 28 verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. He that turneth away his ear from the word of God, even his prayer shall be abomination. Verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. Occultism is there. You cover it up. Just come to church. Come to the gathering of the people of God. The wooden idols are still there. Or maybe it's the idol of gold. Idol of money. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh. Not only to confess. You for confess and forsake. You say, iniquity no more. Transgression no more. Evil no more. Going against or going contrary to the word and the will of God no more. You confess and forsake. You will definitely, assuredly have mercy. I said you'll definitely, assuredly have mercy. Isaiah chapter 1. There were many people in those days of old that did not regard the word of God. All the thought was calm and shout in the ears of God and scream in the ears of God and God must hear them. All the thought was, will cry, will weep, will shed tears in the sight of God. And we will move God emotionally to hear our prayers. But God said, it doesn't work that way. Look at Isaiah chapter 1 verse 15. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Why? Because your hands are full of blood. Wash you. Make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment, justice. Relieve the oppressed. Don't be an oppressor. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. After that, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. The Lord will answer our prayers. But then we must come with the right mind. Come in the right attitude and come with a clean clear conscience first peter chapter 3 first peter chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 7 first peter chapter 3 verse 7 likewise ye husbands dwell with them with your wives According to knowledge, 
giving honor unto the wife as the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life so that your prayers will not be hindered see as we're reading the old testament and the new testament the uniform teaching testimony of the word of god is that our lives ought to be clean ought to be clear and our conscience to be clear before the lord and it says over here as he's talking to individuals so he's talking to husbands and he's talking to wives wives if you were to read that how will you read this verse 7 likewise ye wives dwell with your husbands according to knowledge giving honor unto the husband as unto the lord and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered it tells us then that our private lives could hinder our prayers our family lives could hinder our prayers treating the wife or treating the husband as if she were a piece of wood having no feeling and trampling on her that could hinder your prayers but you make right your ways you say what if i'm not married look at verse 8 finally be ye all married or not married of one mind having compassion one of another love as brethren you want your prayers to be uh, to be answered consider the brotherhood consider the brethren be pitiful be courteous not trying evil for evil or railing for railing but contrary wise blessing knowing that ye are there unto called that he should inherit a blessing a life of violence a life of evil a life of wickedness a life of hatred that will hinder your prayer you'll not be able to inherit the blessing it's not the shouting in prayer it's not the screaming in prayer that makes prayer to prevail. It's the conscience, the heart, the cleansing. It goes on to say, for he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no girl. Let him eschew shun evil. And do good let him seek peace and he seal it for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous married or not married and his ears are open unto their prayers married or not married but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil point number two the powerful promise that never fails the promise that god has given mighty and powerful and when god makes a promise he stands by that promise because of the character of god because of the attributes of god that's why you can come with faith and that faith will not fail because the promises of God cannot fail Titus chapter 1 verse 2 Titus chapter 1 verse 2 in hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began 
before you were born, before the country existed, before the problems arose, and before the world began, he promised eternal life. And because he's the everlasting, eternal, infinite God, and he cannot lie, that's why you can come to the Lord, knowing he has promised me eternal life. In 1 John chapter 2, powerful promises that never fail. 1 John chapter 2, verse 25, he promised you eternal life. What a great promise. And you can come to the Lord and say, Lord, I need that eternal life, salvation, being born again, being called into the kingdom. First John chapter 2 verse 25 and this is the promise that he has promised us even eternal life is there and you can come for that life of God in man is the life that comes with salvation the life that comes with the new birth the promise that cannot fail in Luke chapter 1 reading from verse 72 as he has promised us eternal life so as he also promised us holiness in Luke chapter 1 verse 72 to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swear to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life that's what he promised he promised salvation eternal life he promised sanctification holiness and righteousness before him there's the outward holiness before man that's salvation there's outward external righteousness before man that's salvation eternal life your sins are forgiven. You now live a life above reproach. But now, the holiness that is internal in the heart that God and God only can see in holiness and righteousness before Him all the days of our lives. He has promised that He will do it. I said He will do it. Second Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 3. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. It's given unto us in promise all things pertaining to life, your personal life your family life, your professional life, your life that deals with the physical, healing, deliverance, provision, supply, is promised everything. They pertain unto life. He has also given us promises that pertain to godliness that makes you live a righteous life, a holy life, a spotless life, a life above reproach. Through through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises he has given us exceedingly great and exceedingly precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature the nature that does not sin the nature that does not do evil, does not think evil, 
does not perpetrate evil. The nature that does not plan evil. The nature of God. According to these precious promise, promises, he has given us this divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. You see there the promise of salvation. The promise of sanctification. Luke chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 49. Luke chapter 24. And we're reading from verse 49. Yeah, it tells us of the promise of power from on high. We need power. There's a mighty devil in the world and he wants to make you fall. He wants to ruin your Christian life. But there's a power of the Holy Ghost that subdues him, overpowers him, and conquers him. And Jesus said in Luke chapter 24 verse 49, And behold, I sent the promise, that's it, the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem, until ye be endued with power from on high. There's a power from beneath that wants to wage war against your life, wants to contend against your life. Is that power from beneath that wants to destroy your body, destroy your family, destroy every good thing in your life? But the power from on high, the power of the Holy Ghost is the dynamite from heaven that comes to destroy all the works of the devil. This morning, you are free. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 4 And being assembled together with them He commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem But wait for the promise Wait for the promise of the Father Which says he, ye have heard of me for John truly baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. What a promise. As John immersed the people in water, in the river, so you'll be immersed in the stream, in the ocean of the Holy Ghost, filled and surrounded by the power of the fire of the Holy Ghost. As John dipped them inside the water, so not many days as you'll be dipped inside, enveloped by the power and the fire of the Holy Ghost. Verse 8. But ye shall receive a power. Ye shall receive Dynamis, the dynamite. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, the power to witness where the gospel had been rejected before. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, the power to witness and to evangelize where people are zealous for a religion that does not say that's the power of the Holy Ghost and in Samaria the power to witness and to evangelize and to do so winning in places where there is idol worship syncretism joining the little bit of the Bible with much of tradition like in Samaria the power to witness effectively in such places that's the power of the Holy Ghost. And unto the uttermost part of the earth, where they have never heard, where they have never known, 
the power of the gospel it says the promise is yours acts chapter 2 acts chapter 2 verse 39 for the promise is unto you promise of eternal life for the promise is unto you the promise of salvation forgiveness cleansing and freedom from sin the promise is unto you the promise of sanctification the promise of holiness without which no man shall see the lord the promise of a clean heart holiness and righteousness before god all the days of our life the promise of a soft heart or the stony heart taken away that promise is unto you the promise of the power dynamite of the holy ghost the power and the fire of the holy ghost that promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call we can have confidence in that promise in all the promises of the lord because he is a god that cannot fail we're looking at hebrews chapter 6 hebrews chapter 6 reading from verse 17 hebrews chapter 6 verse 17 wherein god willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie when he gave you the promise of eternal life and said come I'll save you impossible for him to lie when he said I'll give you the divine nature I'll sanctify you make you holy impossible for him to lie when he said i'll pour my spirit upon you and the dynamite and the fire of the holy ghost will destroy any weakness in your heart in your spirit in your life is a god that cannot lie so we can have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering as you come to the Lord in prayer and you are asking him to save you or to sanctify you or to feel you, baptize you, immerse you in the Holy Ghost. Or to heal you. Or to deliver you. Or to provide for you standing on any promise of the Lord. Let us come before the Lord, holding fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised number three the precious possession of the faithful the precious possession of the faithful as you come before the lord and you are asking the lord oh lord here am i fulfill your promise grant me the portion the possession you have promised me in uh, psalm 2 reading from verse 8 psalm 2 verse 8 ask of me and i shall give thee the, uh, the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession there are people who might be asking for possessions that do not go beyond this earth possessions that fade away possessions that will mean nothing on the day of death they ask him for money asking for riches asking for material things 
ask him for brick and mortar ask him for sand or cement ask him for paper or whatever but an inheritance a possession that goes beyond this earth seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness after that all the other little little material things he will add unto you what possession are you to ask you want to be a soul winner you want to ask for the souls of those sinners to come to know the lord and you're saying oh lord give me converts or i die give me children or i die children for the king followers of the king disciples of the lord ask of me and i shall give the, the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession that's what he wants to give and as you ask he will give unto you isaiah chapter 63 isaiah chapter 63 reading from verse 18 isaiah 63 verse 18 the people of his holiness have possessed it there are things that only the people of his holiness can possess the people who are sinful cannot possess the people who are dirty despised in the sight of the lord cannot possess there are possessions that come to us after we become holy sanctified purified and then we can say this is the precious possession of the people who are holy the people of his holiness have possessed it but a little while while our adversaries have trodden down the sanctuary we are thy we are thine thou never bearest rule over them they were not called by thy name here the prophet is saying the heathen people who are not called by the name of the lord they don't have a right to possess this and yet they greedily grab what does not belong to them this is ours and when we come on the ground of holiness once again it will give us all that belongs to us you'll possess your possession and you'll possess the portion that is meant for the people of his holiness in jesus name in psalm 73 reading here from verse 24 psalm 73 verse 24 thou shalt guide me with thy counsel the lord will guide you he knows where the blessings are he knows where your good is he knows where the portion the possession of your inheritance he knows where to find that and he says he will guide you with his counsel and afterward receive me to glory anything you are asking the lord should be something that will not hinder you from getting to glory there are many people that just ask lord give me a wife why don't you qualify that give me a wife that afterward you lead me you receive me to glory lord give me a husband why don't you add something to that lord give me a husband that will not take the kingdom of god away from me that afterward after the husband you lead me and receive me to glory lord give me a job why don't you add something to that a job that will not take me away from your glory from your kingdom afterward you lead me to glory lord give me a land a piece of land a house in the community why don't you join something with that lord give me a house but not a house that will make me stray away from you i will still remain in you afterward you lead me to glory 
Lord, give me an opportunity. Lord, give me a talent. Lord, give me a gift. Lord, give me a ministry. Lord, give me this. Don't give me something else. Lead me away from glory. Lord, give me this, but something that afterward you receive me to glory. Verse 25, whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. Then he goes on to say, My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. God, the strength of my heart and my portion, my possession forever. Don't allow anything in your life that will take that divine portion, divine nature away from you. Lamentation chapter 3, verse 23, 24, 25. Lamentation chapter 3, verse 23. The new every morning, great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion. The Lord is my portion. Whatever I have, once the Lord is still my portion, that's all right. But whatever I will have, whatever, whatever, power, if the Lord is no more my portion, that power is not good. Political position. If the Lord is still my portion, that's all right. But if that position will make the Lord not to be my portion anymore, that's not good. Material things. If I still have the Lord, that's good. But whatever will take the Lord away from my life that is no more my portion, that's not good. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him to the soul that seeketh him. The Lord is saying he wants to give you himself and everything he has, he wants to be your portion. I said he wants to be your portion and whatever else may be in your life, that will drive away the Lord from you, that will make you to backslide. I pray the Lord will take it away from you in Jesus' name. Psalm 16, reading from verse 5. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my Lord. The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. How I pray that this will be true of you. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My reins, my very innermost being also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord before me. That's what he wants you to do always. I've set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. You will not be moved. I said you will not be moved. Obadiah was 17. Obadiah, verse 17. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. Deliverance from sin. Deliverance from sickness. Deliverance from Satan. Upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness and there shall be holiness are you there 
and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess the house of Jacob shall possess the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions if you look at possession there it's in the plural possessions Poss possessions that means all that God has provided all he has promised you want to be wise this morning go for the eternal life first salvation sanctification holy ghost baptism power from on high and then of course there's healing there's deliverance there's provision holiness without which no man shall save the lord right there in the middle deliverance holiness possessions you will possess this morning are you still there i said you'll possess this morning let's rise up let's rise up remember the prayer that prevails the prayer that comes out of a clean heart out of a pure heart out of a heart that is not hiding sin tolerating sin embracing sin excusing sin loving sin a heart that is free and as you come check up you have eternal life that's your possession you can ask the lord check up you have sanctification that's your possession that's the promise and provision of christ for you you can ask him he'll sanctify you are you saved and sanctified have you been baptized in the holy ghost or are you neglecting the holy spirit are you overlooking the holy spirit are you relegating the holy spirit to the background a christian of the brain only your brain a christian of the secular only the secular knowledge that's what to bring to the kingdom that's what to bring to the service of the lord a christian of college training no holy ghost that holy ghost power is your promised possession the prayer that prevails oh lord here am i ask him he'll give you eternal life and come with a heart that is yielded to the lord willing to make restitution willing to have a conscience void of offense toward God and toward man clean conscience clear conscience washed from the guilt and the condemnation of the condemned eternal life if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves seek my face and pray i will hear from heaven i will forgive their sin i will heal their land prayer from a sincere heart the promise is unto you whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved the promise is unto you he'll sanctify you he'll make you holy 
the oath that he swore to our fathers that he will grant us that we have been delivered from the hands of our enemies might serve him in holiness and righteousness before God all the days of our lives. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Ask him. Make you holy in your heart, holy in your thoughts, holy in your mind, holy in the secret, holy in the private, holy in public. And your spirit, soul, and body will be an embodiment of holiness unto the Lord. Saved, sanctified, spirit-filled, baptized in the Holy Ghost. The dynamite and the power, the fire of the Holy Ghost can come upon your life. that transports you from the weakness of a religious life to the power of a revived life. Persevere in prayer. Persevere. Persevere. Though he may not give him because of his, his friend, Yet for his importunity, for his importunity, he will give him as many as he needs. Ask him, be importunate, be persevering, trust him, lean on him, he'll do it. Come to the Lord. A face in the Lord. That's what he promised. You can come unto the Lord. Salvation. Nobody will get it for you. You'll get it yourself. Nobody will repent for you. Nobody will make the restitution for you. Nobody can get that eternal life for you. Come. He has promised you. It's your privilege to come. You can come. Demonstrate before the Lord. I want eternal life. Holiness. Sanctification, pure heart, clean heart. Nobody will get that for you. Come to the Lord yourself. Lord, I need this. Consecration, nobody can make that consecration for you. I lay everything upon the altar. Lord, here am I sanctify me and the power of the Holy Ghost seek him they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength you want to exchange your weakness for his strength Your fainting with his power. You need healing? You can come. They all came to Jesus in days gone by. 
and everyone that came the Lord heal them you can come deliverance you can come to the Lord and lay hold on his promise he cannot lie he's a faithful God he saves he sanctifies he baptizes in the Holy Ghost he heals he delivers he provides come and receive let him grant you the power to go and sin no more the power of a holy heart righteous life and the power of the Holy Ghost and the power that lays hold on the hand of God that made the whole earth and that moves the universe. Come, come in faith, you will not be denied.